Okay, guys, listen up. We've got an important topic today. This is a systematic step-by-step -step protocol. Literally anyone can do this for fast fat loss without starving yourself, okay? Literally anyone could do this. This is idiot-proof. I could not make this any more simple. If you watch this whole video and you still don't know how to get rid of your belly fat, you are a moron and you deserve to be fat, okay? This is the only video you will ever need to watch on fat loss, ever. You won't need another video ever again. I'm going to give you absolutely everything you need to know just in this one video, okay? We're going to cover some stuff I haven't seen anyone talk about before. Now, how to get the most from this video? What I want you to do is watch it once all the way through and then go back again and follow along to the steps. I'm going to talk about some steps in a minute. You, just watch it once all the way through so you get a good high level overview of everything that we're going to cover and then go back and follow along to the steps. It'll make it so much easier for you to do it this way. This is basically a masterclass on fat loss. I should charge money for this. Coaches, I know some coaches online that charge money for much less than this. And I'm just giving you it for free because I know most of you are not going to do anything with this information. And you guys deserve to be fat and you guys deserve to have that belly that you have. But I know some of you are going to get so much value from this video that you're then going to pay for me for one-to-one -one coaching. So I'll be honest with you, that's why I'm making this video, okay? Now, also, something to know is that this does require about one to two hours of upfront work. This is the easiest method I know of, but there is about one to two hours of upfront work, which is where we do some calculations and we work out some stuff and we'll get into it. And then all you have to do is execute and stick to the process. It's literally step by step, all right? So in this video, we're going to cover, number one, why you are fat. Number two, the theory behind fat loss. Number three, the three steps to guarantee fat loss. And number four, three fat loss hacks influencers won't tell you, all right? So let's get into it. Why you are fat. Let's be honest, a fat belly is gross. It's not masculine. Dad bods are not cool. If you're a guy and you have a belly, you need to fix that. ASAP. And the good news is, if you're fat right now, it's a skill issue, okay? All it is, is a skill issue. So if you are you don't have the body that you want, it's just a skill issue. That's all you need to understand. And it, let's imagine for a second that we put my head, with all my skills and knowledge, on your body. How fast do you think it would take me to get lean? How fast do you think? I bet you it would not take me very long at all. Okay, so now that we know that, this means that you can learn how to not be fat without too much effort. You don't have to starve yourself to get skinny, I promise. Um, and how are you going to learn this? You're going to learn all this by watching this video. This video is literally, I don't know what I was going to say there. <laughs> this video is literally the only video you ever need to watch to get rid of that fat belly forever, all right? The theory behind fat loss. Now, we've got to cover a little bit of theory. I've tried to make this as simple as possible, but if you don't understand the theory, then you're not going to understand the reason why we're doing the steps. If you understand the theory first, the steps are going to make more sense, all right? So the theory behind fat loss. Let's put me over here, okay? This is, might look complicated, but I promise you this is extremely simple. Here we have an equation. Calories in minus calories out equals net difference, okay? So if the net difference is positive, you gain weight. If the net difference is negative, you will lose weight. So if we want to get rid of your belly fat, we need to have a negative net difference in calories, meaning the calories that in, which you consume from food and drinks, needs to be less than the calories out, which is the calories that you effectively burn through your BMR, knee, exercise, and thermic effect of food. You don't need to worry about this. I'm going to make it even far more simple than this, okay? But just understand at a high level, that's what's going on here. You're having calories in, and you're having calories out, and there's a net difference. And for you to lose belly fat, you need to be in a negative calorie uh, difference, also known as a calorie deficit, all right? So in order to lose belly fat, the calories you consume must be less than the calories that, that you burn, aka you're in a calorie deficit. So 
how do we create a calorie deficit? Well, luckily, there's only two ways. There's literally only two ways we can create a calorie deficit, all right? We consume less calories or we move more. Like I'm telling you, this guys, this is not rocket science, okay? Now, there is a quick note that I just want to mention. There are a few other factors which influence calorie balance, including sleep, health, lifestyle, hormones, muscle mass, light exposure, and many more. I'll provide some general recommendations right now. For example, sleep, seven to nine hours, health, get some blood work done, lifestyle, quit doing weekends, quit drinking alcohol, quit partying, hormones, if you think your hormones might be uh, low, get some blood tests done, muscle mass, uh, we're going to talk about lifting weight, so we'll cover that one. Light exposure. Make sure you're going outside every single day, guys. Get some natural light into your eyes and onto the skin. Uh, that will be a good thing for you today. That's also why I'm looking a little bit red today. But uh, yeah, I'll provide... These are some general recommendations, but if you want the best results possible and you want to get rid of that belly fat as fast as possible and you want someone to just make it as easy as it can possibly be, then you should consider my one-to-one coaching program links down below okay shameless plug over so now that we know there's only two ways to create a calorie deficit you're probably wondering what when and how much should i eat and what when and how much should i move so that's what we're going to cover welcome to the five steps to guarantee fat loss all right step number one estimate calories and protein okay so i'm literally going to show you how to do this right now the first thing that we need to do is go to a calorie estimator okay so go to google or your search engine of choice and search tdee calculator or you can do calorie calculator honestly it doesn't matter i just like this one put in your age 31 weight 101 height 190. Obviously, you're going to put your values in, not mine. Activity, always underestimate this because they always get it wrong. Okay. I would actually put myself as like heavy exercise, but I'm going to go moderate here. Uh, body fat, what, 11 maybe? I can't remember what I put in last time. Maybe nine. Let's just call it 10. Okay. So 3,000. 617 okay this is my estimated calories for my maintenance so if i want to stay the same way this is roughly how many calories i should be eating so go back here so change this what was it i got a different number today 3100 3617 sorry so that is my maintenance calories, but we can't eat at maintenance because we need to be in a calorie deficit. And remember, we want to do this fast, okay? So we're going to do a 500 calorie deficit. So we do 3617, 3,617 minus 500 calories is 3,117, I believe, if my math's correct, all right? This is just the number we will start at and it will have to change over time, okay? We'll not stay at this number forever. This is just the number that we're starting at right now, okay? That is how many calories we need to consume. Also, how much protein? Well, you should aim to eat one gram per pound of protein. So I weigh about 222 pounds. So I should consume around 220 grams of protein per day, okay? The four calories per gram of protein. So if we work that out of how many calories in protein, it's 220 times four is 880 calories from protein, okay? So we take this number here, which is my target for the day, 3,117, right? We do 3,117 minus 88. I don't know what that is, but we can just work it out here. 2,237, okay? Oh, sorry, 2,000. Sorry about that. 2,200. Oh, yeah, 2,237. I'm getting confused. 2,237, okay? This is how many calories I have left over for carbs and fats. Now, you're probably wondering, how many carbs should I have? How much fat should I have? Honestly, it doesn't matter. There are some general rules out there, but the most important thing is total calories and protein. And if you just focus on those two variables, 
if you're a beginner and you've got belly fat, that's all you need to worry about. Once we want to start optimizing your performance or thinking about mental performance or, you know, we want to get a little bit more advanced, then we can start playing around with the macros. But right now, it doesn't matter. Also, you might be wondering, what about meal timing? What about frequency? Now, personally, for myself and most of my clients get the best results on anywhere between two to four meals a day. Okay, you don't need to go any more than four. You can do one if you want. If you want to go extreme, some people do one, which we're going to talk about later on in this video. But I would recommend somewhere between two to four meals a day and evenly spread out your protein across all those meals, okay? Uh, and make sure that you're eating most of, all of your meals while this, ideally while the sun is up or just after sunset, okay? You want to be eating most of your meals when the sun is up, because that's literally what we would have done hundreds, hundreds of thousands of years ago when we lived in caves, right? That is calories and protein. So by this point, you should know two things. How many calories to consume per day, which is around 3,150 for me, and how much protein to eat per day, which for me is 220 grams. No, these are estimates and will have to change over time, which we'll talk about. Step number two, exercise. So you're going to do at least two types of exercise every single day. This is non-negotiable. First thing, walking. Anyone can do it. It requires zero skill whatsoever. There are zero excuses for not walking every single day. 10,000 steps per day is a good place to start. Just get your steps done. 10,000 steps. I don't want to hear any excuses. It's simple. Anyone can do 10K steps within reason, right? As long as you, you know, you're not disabled or something like that. 10K steps every single day minimum. Next thing, lift weights. All you need to do is lift weights for three to five hours per week. Your sessions should be no longer than an hour. So that's three to five sessions per week. Don't go over five sessions. Don't do less than three, three to five. Okay. Five will be best or four. It really depends on how advanced you are, but somewhere between three to five sessions per week on lifting weights. If you don't know how to lift weights, go watch some of my previous videos. Uh, I made a video, how to actually lift weights to build muscle. Go watch that video after you finish this one, of course. Now, you might be wondering, oh, James, what about sports, classes, this other thing, etc.? You want to do anything else? By all means, go for it. But also, make sure you always do your steps and you always lift weights. These two are absolutely non-negotiable, all right? Remember, we want to do this fast, okay? And we want to make this as easy as possible. Well, these are the things that we've got to do. These are non-negotiable, right? Step number three, this is the secret sauce. This is the secret sauce that you've all been waiting for of how we're going to make this easy, okay? Because remember, we want to make this as easy as possible. So what I want you to do is come up with your five favorite meals. So for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner, come up with five meals for each. You can do three. You can do, like me, I'm a savage. I can eat the same thing for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for weeks on end. I'm guessing you're probably not a weirdo like me. So just come up with, you know, five breakfasts that you like, five lunches that you like, five dinners that you like. And what you want to do is you want to use the app called Macro Factor, okay? I'm not affiliated with them. It's just the app that I use. Download Macro Factor. Do not listen to their calorie and macro recommendations because it's way off but I just use it as a macro tracker and I use it to track my weight. And on there, what you can do is, I actually might see if I can put this on screen. Let's see, uh, record screen. And on macro factor, what you can do is you can go to add new recipe and you can give it a name where uh, we'll call it um, test name. Okay, total weight, uh, 100 grams. I don't think it really matters. All right, just leave that. Add ingredients, uh, 250 beef, 300 rice, done. Okay, next. Okay, so now on here, I can go test name and just add it with, with, with one click. And... It's done. Well, it's come up twice, but there you go. Okay. So you want to do add a recipe for your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinners. And now that you have all your meals pre-tracked, all you need to do is click a few buttons 
whenever you choose one of these meals, okay? This literally makes it so easy because 90% of the time, you're going to eat from one of these three meals, okay? It's just a little bit of upfront work, like I said, one or two hours, but then it's done. Step number four is tracking, okay? We have to be tracking. If you want to take a systematic approach and you want to guarantee fat loss, remember, I'm talking about the five steps to guarantee fat loss, we have to track. The only way we can guarantee this is if we're tracking. What do we need to be tracking? Number one, your weight every single morning, fasted. When you wake up, go to the toilet, empty yourself, and then weigh yourself every single morning. And you can also put your weight into macro factor as well. Number two, track all the calories that you consume in a day. But now this should be much easier now that you have the custom recipes added to your app, all right? Number three, Take progress photos every week, front, rear, side, same lighting, same location, same day of the week. Try and keep as many variables the same as possible. And if you do this, then, because sometimes the scale doesn't tell the full picture, okay? Sometimes you scare, the scale might not move at all, but there's visible changes in the mirror, okay? So we kind of need, we need, we need both the pictures, uh, sorry, we need both the photos and the scale weight to decide whether we wanna make adjustments, which I'll get to in a second. And track your daily steps. Look, there's many apps to do this. I think even your phone can do this these days. Just get a some kind of step tracker so you know you're hitting your 10K every single day, okay? And what we're looking for is on your graph, when you input your weight into macro factor, we're looking for a steady decline, okay? Somewhere between one to two pounds per week. If you're real fat, two pounds per week is fine. If you're getting down to like, you're getting down to lean. Like for example, for, for me, two pounds per week is very difficult to do. I, I prefer to do one pounds per week. So it really depends on what your current condition is right now. I don't know what's going on here. No way. Okay. So one to two pounds per week and you should be seeing visible changes in the mirror. Okay. We should see something like this. If the graph is too quick down here, it's not sustainable. You're going to plateau quickly, consume more calories so we get a more steady graph. If your graph is flat, you're not losing weight. You need to take more steps or you need to uh, eat less food. And if your weight is going up, you are more on because you're overheating, okay? You're in a calorie surplus, all right? Step number five is adjust because the estimates that we did at the beginning they might not be correct. Remember, we're just using a calculator. These calculators aren't exact. So either that's an issue or just over time, as your body weight comes down, your body is going to go for a process called metabolic adaptation. Your body does this as it adapts to calorie restriction by slowing down your metabolism to conserve energy, okay? And here's the fat loss algorithm, okay? If your seven day average body weight hasn't moved for two weeks and there's no visible progress in the mirror, we have two options to adjust. We can either take more steps, e.g. add an extra thousand steps, or we can eat less food, e.g. minus 100 calories, or we can do both together at the same time. That's it. That's literally the only two things we can do. Do you see how simple this is yet? Hopefully, you're starting to see how simple this is. If you follow this exactly how I've outlined, you are guaranteed to lose fat. You're literally guaranteed to lose fat. It's impossible. It's physically impossible for you to not lose fat if you do this, okay? But I know what you're thinking. Oh, okay, sure, James. This sounds easy for you, but I struggle with X, Y, or Z, all right? Excuses. But here are three fat loss hacks influencers won't tell you. Uh, this name cracks me up. It's uh, maybe a little bit dramatic, but here are some hacks to make it easier. Hack number one, time-restricted eating. Just skip breakfast. Most people aren't even hungry uh, at breakfast time. So if you're not hungry, in fact, any time of the day, if you, if you want to be in a calorie deficit and you're not hungry, do not eat, okay? Just make sure you get your protein in at some point of the day, at some part of the day. But if you're not hungry, don't eat, especially at breakfast time. So you can just cut out your breakfast and you can just do lunch and dinner. Or you can eat all your calories in a smaller time window. E.g., you could still do breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but eat breakfast at 10 a.m., 
lunch at 2 a.m. and dinner at 6 p.m., for example. This means you have a smaller window of time to fuck up, basically. A smaller window of time to not go over your calories. Many people are not even hungry in the mornings anyway. Now, if you want to go full beast mode, you can do OMAD. OMAD stands for one meal a day. So I've done this for a while. I used to wait until about 5 p.m. and just go to an all-you-can-eat Brazilian steakhouse and just eat loads of meat. I was actually gaining weight doing that, so I wouldn't go to an all-you-can-eat place. I'd, go so, I'd actually just do it at home or like, you know, track it or something like that. But if you want to take this to the, to the extreme, you can do one meal a day. All right? Remember, this is how to lose fat fast. Hack number two. I see so many people at the gym who've got fat bellies and they're drinking protein shakes. You do not need the protein shakes. Most protein shakes are full of shit. Anyway, shakes are for fakes, okay? <laughs> Skip the shakes and all liquid calories altogether because the reason why you want to avoid liquid calories is they don't fill you up and you're just wasting calories that could be eaten eaten on foods which are more filling, which are going to keep you satiated for longer, which is going to make it easier to, for you to stick to your calorie deficit. The golden rule of fat loss is no liquid calories. All right. Hack number three, microdose the exercise. You're probably wondering what the hell am I talking about? Well, if you've got, if you're an office job, get a standing desk, stand up, just standing instead of sitting, you're going to burn more calories per hour. Waiting for the kettle to brew. Do some press-ups. Do press-ups non-stop until the kettle has finished boiling. Okay, TV commercial. Do bodyweight squats until the TV commercial is finished, all right? If you live in an apartment block, take the stairs. Elevators are for fatties anyway, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Look for times throughout the day where you can squeeze exercise in. Most people have like a one-hour period where they allocate for the gym, and that's their exercise time. And for the other 23 hours of the day, they're doing nothing. Do you realize how hard it's going to be for to, to, to lose fat if for 23 hours of the day, you're doing nothing at all? You're like, you just sat on the sofa, or you're driving in your car, or you sat at your office job or whatever. No wonder you're finding it hard to lose weight if for 23 hours a day, you're sedentary. Okay, if you do these three hacks, you do the five steps, you do everything that I've told you, that's it. This is literally the secret sauce to finally getting rid of your belly fat once and for all. Remember, being fat is a skill issue. And because it's a skill issue, that means you can learn everything you need to know to fix your situation. It's a good thing that it's a skill issue, all right? So now that you've reached it this far, you know everything you need to do. You know how easy it is. All you have to do now is execute. That's it. Now, if you have questions or you want someone to walk you through this step by step, consider my coaching program. All the links are down below. I'll make it as easy as possible for you to get rid of that belly fat and hit your fitness goals. If you like this video and you want more info like this, grab my best fitness protocols down below. It's completely free. Uh, all the links are down below. And I just want to say, I believe in you. If you've got this far, you've watched all of this video, you're taking this information in, you can do this. Go back and watch this video again if, if needed. Take notes, follow the steps, and do this for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. I guarantee you will lose belly fat. Take photos today. Make an album on your phone called Progress Photos or Physique or call it whatever you want. Send them to me on Instagram if you really want to. Some people do. Send me the photos. Tell me your goal and go out there and hit it. And I promise you, if you do everything in this video, there's nothing else you need to do, okay? The, the, may, there might be some more ha little hacks you can do, but the main thing is calories in and calories out. And how can we make this as easy as possible for you to stick to a calorie deficit sustainably over the long term? Well, that's what the five steps are for. So I hoped you enjoyed this video. I hope you got value from it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.